when all of my extended family gets together, and I just mean my brothers and sisters, their spouses, their kids, and their kids, we have upwards of 50 people. We haven't been together in quite a long time, but let me tell you, the last time we were, it was quite a feast. We love to eat. There are a few of us who really like to cook. So we're talking 13 or 14 pies and a massive turkey and a ham, mashed potatoes and gravy, all kinds of vegetables, uh, just really a feast. And when a big family comes together around a feast like that, there's a lot of laughter and a lot of craziness and some arguments and an occasional conflict and a spilled glass of lemonade. And there's just some chaos that goes along with all that feasting. Oh, and a great deal of preparation that had to come before. <laughs> Today on Paint a Beautiful Picture, we're going to talk about funerals and feasts. I don't know about your family, but in mine, especially when I was a younger person, whenever someone died, our whole entire family would get together. And afterwards, it was actually quite a great time. We would talk about that person's life and things they did and what they meant to us. And it often involved a feast because we would be sharing a meal together. Uh, and we would just often spend hours and hours and hours and hours together celebrating that person's life and talking about what it all meant. In today's world, I hate to say this, oftentimes there are not funerals or even memorials or anything. Someone dies, they get cremated, the end. I think that's really sad. I believe that one of the things that we need to help our children understand is the principle that life is going to end in death. People are going to die. And that death is an opportunity to celebrate that person's life, what they meant to us, fond memories that we have of them and with them. And so I think that families need to t develop the sense of when someone passes away that we are going to have a funeral. And it doesn't necessarily even have to be a traditional one like in a church or in a funeral parlor. But we ourselves, we will have a funereal s setting and talk about that person and remember that person. And then we will share a feast. I really want to invite you to consider this. Uh, a place where I used to go to church, the pastor would talk to people and he would say to them as they got older or if they had become ill, I want you to write down things that you would like to have happen at your funeral. The kind of music that you would have, a scriptural passage that you would like read. I, I just want you to write this down for me. And I think that was genius. My sons are very aware of what I would like to have happen at my funeral and someday if I die, when I die, that they will have that very big celebration about my life because I have had a really rich, fantastic life and I believe it's worth celebrating. I'm pretty sure my kids think it is too. You need to consider this very strongly. If your folks are getting older, you need to start preparing your children for the reality that people do, in fact, get older, people get sick, people die. Sometimes even young people die. Instead of denying it or ignoring it, approach it with a much more head-on attitude of it's going to happen. And so make your life worthwhile while you're breathing and you're above ground. And once your life has ended, we'll celebrate it. So help your kids start to develop a, a healthy, proper response toward death. But I'm going to go very specifically to feasting. I think that a lot of people today just eat so much so often that that feast day isn't really a big deal. I think that Thanksgiving and Christmas with a lot of persons with whom I have spoken are just days that are sort of a headache or a pain in the neck or I had to do all this work. Wow. All I can say to you is what a tragedy. We need to develop within our own hearts and minds as well as within the hearts and minds of our children that feast days are a great joy. 
an opportunity to share love. The, the chance of the year to spend time together that is meaningful and purposeful and joyful. And that's up to you. I would say mom, although I know lots of dads who cook. So I'm going to say mom, dad, or both of you together, whichever one of you it is who does better in the kitchen. You should plan feasts a minimum of four times a year. That's once a quarter, okay? So whether you have an Easter feast, a 4th of July feast, a Thanksgiving feast, a Christmas Christmas feast, which are very common ones, or a Memorial Day one, a Labor Day one, a Valentine's Day one, a St. Patty's Day one, whichever one that you pick a couple times a year where you purposefully feast. That might mean that you invite a couple of good friends over. It might mean that you have both sets of your folks come over and you really, really cook. And then you set the table and you don't sit in front of the television watching the parade or the football game, but you actually sit at the table and share a feast together. You have bread, maybe a bottle of wine. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. I'm just saying uh, eggnog. You enjoy a beautiful roast or a turkey or a stuffed chicken or fried pork chops. I really don't care what you have, but I want you to make kind of a big deal out of it. I want you to have beautiful napkins. I don't even care if you use paper plates as long as they're pretty ones. And just sit there together and share how your couple of months have been, what's been meaningful, what's been important, what's going on in your life, how you've been tackling things or battling things. Just make it a feast and make it a time where every single one of you has the opportunity to sit there and laugh and enjoy each other's company and share with one another. I really want to encourage you about that. Our family hasn't done that in a really long time. And I think that very truthfully, even if there is a funeral in our future among my siblings, I still don't know that that's going to happen because things have changed so much. But within my very own family, my sons, my daughter-in-law, my grandsons, we feast together at least a couple of times a year in spite of the fact that we live many thousands of miles or half of a world away from each other. Feast are a big thing with us. We love the fellowship and the joy of the feast. I want to invite you to seriously consider the principle in your family of feasting together around a good meal and around good times together. I would really like you to consider making that a priority. My challenge question for you today is, when was the last time I shared a feast with my family? If the answer is never, I invite you to look at the first available opportunity to do it. <laughs> and you know what? If all of everything I described is more than you think you can handle, then do it over hot dogs and hamburgers on the grill with potato salad and macaroni salad that you bought at your local grocers or at Walmart with chips. And you can even buy the cake for all I care. But make it a celebration where you sit together and share together and have a great time together. You know, last week when we talked about that family portrait, this is one of those places where I hope that year after year after year, especially in your kids' minds, as well as in your own, they will have these precious photographs of wonderful feasts that you all shared together. It's been great having you with me today on Paint a Beautiful Picture. I will look for you soon. You may find additional information on our paintabeautifulpicture.com website. Additionally, you may watch me on Rumble, and you may also listen to a podcast on Buzzsprout or Spreaker, all under the name Paint a Beautiful Picture. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. You may subscribe, and if you are interested in receiving notifications, please hit the notifications button.